Did you hear about the coup over the weekend in Burkina Faso? Military leaders took over the West African country's TV broadcasts to announce they had removed the previous military leader who had been in power since ousting the country's president back in January. Believe it or not, it's the fifth African nation to suffer a military coup in the past two years. There's also Mali, Chad, Guinea and Sudan, all countries plagued by, as the New York Times puts it, insecurity, poor governance and frustrated youth. What country isn't plagued by insecurity, poor governance, and frustrated youth these days? But still, our country has nothing to do with those countries. When you think of military officers taking power, you don't think of America. You think of Argentina or Spain or Pakistan or Myanmar or even civilian leaders like Putin using war and national security to impose a militarized totalitarian state on their citizens. But today, let's ask the question, could one of those scenarios happen here? Looking at our institutions, our constitutional system, it seems absurd. You'd need an elected commander in chief who had no qualms about using the military, our military, as a personal army. Remember the old days of General MacArthur and General Patton and these great generals. Now we must have somebody in there. I see my generals, those generals are going to keep us so safe. These are central casting. If I'm doing a movie, I pick you, General. Everybody knows exactly what happened, so, and what I do is I authorize my military. I have generals that are great generals. My generals and my military, they have decision-making ability. Yes, it's easy to forget now, but Donald Trump saw the military as his own private plaything, and he got frustrated when his generals pushed back. Like when he demanded a military parade in Washington on the 4th of July. That's when, according to longtime Washington reporters Susan Glasser and Peter Baker, Trump's number two man at the Air Force, General Paul Selva, told him, quote, I didn't grow up in the United States, I actually grew up in Portugal. Portugal was a dictatorship and parades were about showing the people who had the guns. And in this country, we don't do that. It's not who we are. Even then, Trump asked him, so you don't like the idea? Selva said, no, it's what dictators do. But that was Trump's entire vibe, dictator chic and he wanted his generals to help him achieve it. Which is why, according to Glasser and Baker, Trump loudly complained to his chief of staff, former Marine General John Kelly, quote, you effing generals, why can't you be like the German generals? Which generals, Kelly asked? Trump responded, the German generals in World War II. That's right, Trump reportedly wanted his generals to be more like the Nazi Wehrmacht. But unfortunately for him, he kept getting generals like Mark Milley, his last chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who later told multiple reporters he was worried the president would try to enlist the military in his effort to stay in office after refusing to concede the 2020 election. And then, of course, came the Capitol insurrection on January the 6th, 2021, when nearly one fifth of the defendants were military members or veterans. For Milley and current Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, himself a former general, January 6 drove home the importance of combating far-right extremism within the ranks of the US military. But still, it's not as if Republicans more broadly are suddenly clamoring to purge the military of conscientious officers who take their oath to the Constitution seriously, right? We just have to get uh, serious again, and it means purging the military of the left-wing generals, you know. I'm yes. sure there's a lot of center-right or apolitical colonels that we can promote. That's Arizona GOP Senate nominee Blake Masters. In case you're wondering, Masters has never served in the military. Masters is calling for what sounds a lot like a Stalinist purge of left-wing generals. All this liberal bias run amok in the American military. No, seriously, who is he talking about? We've got to put American troops first, not defense contractors, not foreign refugees, and sure as hell, not woke generals like General White Rage Milley. You see, in addition to worrying about Donald Trump and domestic extremists, Milley also had the temerity to push back when Republicans like right-wing Congressman Matt Gates charged the U.S. military with being too woke. I want to understand white rage, and I'm white. And I want to understand it. So what is it that caused thousands of people to assault this building 
and try to overturn the Constitution of the United States of America. What caused that? I want to find that out. I personally find it offensive that we are accusing the United States military, our general officers, our commissioned, non-commissioned officers, of being, quote, woke or something else because we're studying some theories that are out there. Gates and Masters aren't the only Republicans targeting Milley for political retribution. Last month, six people familiar told NBC News that if Republicans take the House in November, they plan to subpoena Milley and grill him on such pressing matters as wokeness in the armed forces. For the far right, hating Millie is like hating Anthony Fauci or James Comey, imperfect men whose real sin was not using their government power to back all of Donald Trump's plays. Now, for them, Millie represents a military establishment that owes its allegiance to the law and not to a single man, to their beloved dear leader. I mean, can you imagine the armed forces run by an appointee who consistently talks about the military like this? Did you know that a governor can declare war? Governor can declare war. And we, we're going to probably, we're going to probably see that. He needs to seize all of these Dominion and these other uh, voting machines that we have across the country. I want to know why what happened in Minamar can't happen here. No reason. I mean, it, it <clears throat> should happen here. If you find yourself having to walk back statements backing a coup in the US, maybe you're the problem. That was former Trump national security advisor and QAnon conspiracy pusher Mike Flynn. What would you say if you saw this in another country, a former national security advisor openly talking about military coups and governors declaring war? If Trump comes back in 2024, you know what he'll do. He's basically saying it out loud. Yes, he's going to purge the civil service. Yes, he's going to use federal power against migrants, transgender kids, women who have abortions. And yes, he'll make it harder to vote. But there's one more thing he's going to do. He tried to do it the last time he was president, when he wanted to use the military to crush American street protests after the police killing of George Floyd in 2020. His then defense secretary, Mark Esper, says Trump asked him, can't you just shoot them? Just shoot them in the legs or something? using the military against the American people. And General Milley later even told lawmakers that members of the 82nd Airborne had been mobilized with bayonets and little to no crowd training. In fact, after the violent clearing of Lafayette Square outside the White House, General Mark Milley drafted a resignation letter that he never submitted. In it, he told Trump, quote, It is my belief that you were doing great harm, great and irreparable harm to my country. I believe that you have made a concerted effort over time to politicize the United States military. I thought that I could change that. I've come to the realization that I cannot. He never sent the letter. He stayed on and he tried to stay some of Trump's worst impulses. So of course the GOP has targeted Milley now. And of course they want to give Trump what he wants. So how bad could it get in a second Trump administration? Maybe we don't become Burkina Faso overnight or Russia, but could we see the military leadership purged of dissenting voices and then the military deployed against the American people? I mean, don't take my word for it. Take Trump's. Joining me now to discuss is retired Major General Paul Eaton, a veteran of the Iraq war. He's now a senior advisor to the left-leaning group Vote Vets. Uh, General, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Allow me to just dive into what may be a worst-case scenario, I admit. Say it's January 2025 and Donald Trump has just been inaugurated again. A QAnon courting aide like Mike Flynn or Cash Patel becomes acting defense secretary. They start handpicking generals for top commands. There are mass protests on the streets against a second Trump term. At that point, what prevents Trump from using the military against demonstrators? What makes that not a realistic scenario? <laughs> Uh, first, uh, thank you very much for having me on. Second, uh, your lead in was excellent. It was not hyperbolic. It was very, very cool, calm, collected, and a quick address all of the problem. Uh, third, I would like to uh, say thank you and uh, demonstrate my pride in Army and generally uh, military senior uniformed leadership and our civilian leadership. We're doing a great job. And uh, those are specifically the men and women who are going to make sure that what you just outlined will not happen. That said, here's what can happen. 
we go through a hire and fire process. It is overwatched by the Senate. Our Senate requires confirmation for all promotion lists, specifically uh, interested in how we select our general officers and admirals. And uh, the lists that go before the Senate can be manipulated by the Senate. They can make their call on who is going to go forward for promotion and who will not. So a selective process to create a, a coterie of uh, pliant and uh, supplicant general officers and admirals is possible in our system if the president uh, makes it so. So we know that the president wants to do something along those lines. We have Republicans like Blake Masters running for the Senate in Arizona who say they want a political purge of the officers' ranks. Uh, Vice magazine spoke to former Clinton and Bush national security aide Peter Fever, a Navy veteran, about the Masters' plan. He compared it, Fever compared it, to the Soviet purges that left the Red Army leaderless on the eve of World War II and even to Russia putting yes men in charge of the military before the current Ukraine disaster. Fever said, and I quote, that's close to what Stalin and Putin did, and that didn't work out well for them. Masters' cure is far worse than the disease. Do you agree with that assessment, General? And what would a purge, what would a purge like that do to the combat readiness of our armed forces? Uh, specifically, uh, a purge like that coming out of some of the more extreme uh, Republican spokesmen is something that is possible within the system that we have right now. So they, it, it is possible to, uh, to do that. Uh, but we have uh, certain uh, capabilities within the government of the United States and within systems in the United States. Uh, the fourth estate is a primary uh, uh, aid to sanity that, uh, that we have. So the press is our conduit to the American people. Congress is our conduit to the American people. And if we are able to retain a Democratic Party-led House and a Democratic Party-led Senate, uh, we're going to be okay. But there is a terrific amount of vigilance that we've got to demonstrate to make sure that uh, that, that happens and that uh, we deny these extreme uh, spokespeople who are out to get what they call woke generals, and there is nothing woke about our general officer corps. Absolutely not. And uh, I uh, just expect the American voter to understand the nature of the problem and to do the right thing. So you are in the rare position of being a general who, on retiring, stood up to your former boss, then Defense Secretary, Donald Rumsfeld. You wrote in the New York Times at the time that he, quote, is not competent to lead our armed forces. In some, he has shown himself incompetent strategically, operationally and tactically. You called on him to resign, which he did later that year. But we've had lots of ex-generals warn about Trump and the people who enable him. And yet Trump could still be president again. His party could still do his bidding again. What's different today? We have to have faith in the, the rank and file of the United States military. We all swear an oath to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So the rank and file and the uh, senior leadership of the armed forces uh, will do what they can and what they will to ensure that this low probability but very high impact uh, sequence of events uh, not take place. It is... It is within the heart and soul of the uniform military to resist what we are talking about. It is not impossible. And I say low probability, but a very high impact. And the thing that concerns me most is that uh, one of the things that stimulated the op-ed that we wrote back in January, two colleagues of mine and myself, uh, was the fact that 124 generals and admirals signed a letter denying the election and challenging the capability of President Biden to uh, occupy the commander in chief's office. And uh, so I don't expect 
the leadership of the United States military to collapse as we go through a attempted Stalinist purge. But it is not outside of the realm of possibility, and it would instill extraordinary confusion in our ranks. And yes, it would robustly degrade the combat capability of all our services.